Come on along, I'm going to show you where I'm at with this big assemblage. I have been digging and collecting and hoarding and buying and I just have way too much to choose from now and I'm still waiting for an order to come in. So let's take a look at what we got. Okay, there's a ton of just old hardware. There's some new gears I bought, more old hardware. And this is what I started to just lay out to see not where I'm going to put things, but how many things I can fit like across this board to get an idea of how much stuff do I need. So obviously this is like a single layer and things will be layered up and rearranged, but there's just, there's our girl there. Number five was the winner with the lady with the camera. So she's in there. Um, old buttons and there's a memory card and a, uh, timer thingy and a buckle and um, numbers from a keypad and some old jewelry and old keys some pieces electronic pieces another old key piece of a watch uh, TV tube there's some chipboard pieces that I just got those are going to be cool on there and I'm trying to move them so I can show you what's underneath and they're still in the bag but I only have one hand so they're really cool like um, clock hands that have a spot a round spot in the middle where I can put a picture or a button or something a gear and so then moving along I have a little tub of new artsy things blocks and things and just a bunch of stuff that I pulled out. There's beads and wire. I pulled out some paint that I know I want to use. I just got that key, that big vertigree key. I really love that. So this is kind of the middle of the board. I couldn't fit it all in. One thing before I start this, I wanted to share, you know, I'm definitely going to be rusting up that assemblage piece when I get going a little bit more and I pulled out my rust paste they're probably six months old maybe the yellow one is fine creamy like it's supposed to be these two were rock hard I mean rock hard like I couldn't get a knife into it and I was really disappointed because they're not even half gone so I poked around YouTube and I found a video where someone said add water so I tried adding water and absolutely water did not even begin to touch it I let it sit overnight and it was still hard as a rock so I left a comment for the gal whose video I saw the water spraying technique on and told her what was going on with mine and that water didn't work and she directed me to another video from by someone else that said add matte medium just regular old matte medium so i added matte medium and just took a palette knife and just tried to scrunch down into the jars and break it up as much as i could which wasn't a lot to get the matte medium to kind of work its way down a little bit into the rust paste. I let it sit 24 hours, at least 24 hours, and came back and it was a little bit softer. So I was encouraged. I added more matte medium, scrunched it up some more, got some more of it kind of mixing into the matte medium, and um, took my really hard palette knife which I didn't clean, <laughs> but it's it's not very bendy at all. You could probably even use a screwdriver, a flat blade screwdriver, but I really crammed it down as hard as I, or as far as I could 
into the medium in the jar and made like four or five holes as deep as I could get them into the paste and dripped more matte medium let it sit for another 24 hours and it was a little bit softer I was able to get probably down to maybe there was that much maybe a quarter of an inch of really hard dried stuff still left in the bottom so I just put more matte medium so I did this over the course of like five days just adding little bits and little bits more and getting farther and farther down into the jars so today can you see that that is I got ink in this brush it's still I still have a little bit of hard medium down or paste down at the very bottom of the jar but this is usable and I might maybe just mix it in a medicine cup or something with a little more matte medium when I use it just to even soften it up a little bit more and help it spread more I'm just really really happy and grateful to the gal I can't remember her name but I can look it up and I will give her credit in the description box down there for directing me to the other gals video who said add the matte medium so if you add dried up rust paste which an awful lot of us do don't throw it out so I got something new this week from Arteza or is it Arteza I'm not sure have you guys seen these they are DIY frame mixed media sheets they come on a pad uh, you can get watercolor paper sketchbook paper I believe or sketching paper um, this is mixed media paper there are different prices depending on the paper so this is 228 pounds and it's 11 by 14 in the pad but when you fold it it becomes a frame that's 7 by 8.6 so comes on the pad it has the instructions for folding the box frame on the back so I just thought I would play with one of these today and see how it works and I don't want to tear it getting it out of the pad it's really sticky glue at the top of there Don't I fair? Take it off more like you do, I suppose, a block of watercolor paper. You don't rip it off the block, you take it off with an exacto knife. So let me put the pad aside. Okay, so I guess there's no up, down, right, wrong. You just have to decide if you want to do your piece of art landscape or portrait. I'm used to working this way. So I want to leave this intact, I think, until I'm all done. And my first inclination was, well, I'll tape it down and tape off the sides to keep them clean. But I have a tendency to need to turn my work as I'm working so I could tape it down to an artboard I suppose I'm just gonna go for it and I was thinking that maybe I will I have so much here you guys as far as finished goods because I just keep making it and making it and making it and half of it never even gets put on my website um, or anywhere at sea or any place else but I thought maybe I would make maybe one every other week on this cool framed you'll see it at the end how it creates a frame and just do a giveaway I'm here on my channel just you know leave a comment like the video make sure you're subscribed and 
you know, just do a random drawing and somebody will get it. And the nice thing is I can mail it flat because this just all pops together. There's no gluing this frame. There's like little tabs, kind of like a, a gift box, sort of, but a little fancier than that. I mean, it, it tabs in pretty, pretty tight. So I am going to figure out what I want to do on here. I pulled some things out. I have a Tim Holtz picture an old library card, an old um, bingo card, and I got this stamp. It's really, I was excited to get it, but now I'm disappointed. It looks like this. It's called Clear Magic Singles, but it's supposed to, to stamp like in the reverse. So everything that you see that's black would stamp black and everything that's cut out of the stamp would either let the white or whatever your underneath layer is through. I did black archival ink and I got seriously almost nothing. You couldn't even tell that I stamped with it. I put more black archival ink and lined it up and stamped again and you could still barely see it. So I covered the whole thing with liquid De La Rowney, um acrylic ink with a brush. And I got this, which is kind of cool. I stamped it over a book page. Um, and then I just stamped off what was left of the ink around the edges. I guess it's kind of cool. It's not sharp and crisp. I mean... I, I wanted to see all those little lines and there's like little scratch marks in the background and stuff. So I don't know if it's because the stamp was brand new that it didn't work good with the archival ink. I put a ton of ink on it so I know it was inked up good. Really disappointed. I will work with it some more hopefully maybe. You know how sometimes after you use a stamp for a few times they work better. I'll tell you what, it's the stickiest stamp I've ever had. I could hardly get it off the acetate backing. Anyways, I might throw this on here somewhere, or pieces of it. It's kind of cool. I mean, you can sort of tell that's an eye, right? Over here. So, I need to get a background down first. And I think I'm just going to work in this kind of black and white... Um, palette on the top of this, but I think I want some sort of a color on the background. So this is mixed media paper. It's smooth. There's no texture to it whatsoever. So I'm going to put gesso down first because I know I'm going to use a lot of wet. And I'll dry that off and then figure out what I want to do for the background. And I'll see you on the other side. All right, I taped this to the board because it was already starting to buckle. So we'll see how well this holds up under a lot of water. I'm kind of already wishing I had gotten the watercolor paper, which was heavier. But I went for the bargain. I think I had a coupon for the mixed media paper. I am mixing heavy body acrylic paint with some white gesso and I'm just my gesso I'm using gesso that was like the bottom of the bottle and it's got some goobers in it I'm trying to keep them out and I'm just mixing the paint with the gesso on my palette I'm just going to scrape it across here just to get an initial layer of color Here's my fold line. This will be my side. I guess I'll go all the way up on the side with that. I did put gesso there too. Okay, I'm a little concerned about the buckling here. So I'm going to try to not throw too much more wet stuff at this. Try. I say I'll try. I'm going to stamp a little bit of text on here. I 
again, most of this will be covered up, so I'm not real worried about it being a perfect image. vintage pattern paper and I think I'm just going to cover the whole thing kind of lost where my edges are so I'm just going to go out to wherever I know I'm past them I don't know if that text that I just stamped is going to show at all I really like the black markings on these pattern pieces, so I want to keep those a little bit straighter of an edge here. Come down here with this, and I like it the way it looks when it overlaps. It gives you a whole different color. Just making sure I have enough to cover here. Alright, we'll work that out. And a brush, a brush, a brush. There we go. wet again. I don't know if this is going to straighten out. I may end up having to take it off the board and dry it from the back to help it straighten out. Alright, I'm going to dry this layer and then I'm going to start figuring out a collage for the top. This was buckling really badly so I took it off the board and I put it together. It went together really easily. There's just four simple steps on the back of that pad that show you how. Basically you just take these pieces out of the corner and throw them away and then there's little four little tabs that you punch out and then you just fold on the lines and fold it together basically like a box. When the corners just fold into each other there's a little slot there. So that was really easy. This this end didn't get much paper overlap, so I just decided that will be my bottom. So that if you you know lean it up on an easel or prop it up against something, that's the part that you really won't see very much. So let's see, am I in frame here? Pretty much. Okay. So I'm just going to bring my papers in. I kind of figured out how I want them. These are real library cards you guys I got from where did I get these hang on retro cafe art I have a package of 10 of them I think there's 10 in there so I don't want to tear this because it's cool it has the author's name and then the summary of the book and 
where it's um, classified, you know, as fiction, asthma fiction, physically handicapped fiction, adoption fiction. So this says May of 82, so they're vintage-ish. Anyway, I like them. So I'm just going to put this down as kind of a backer behind our girl here. And this is a piece of that paper that I tried to stamp. I'm going to layer that in there. Maybe another piece on this side. This was the word off the top of that bingo card. I thought I wanted this on here. I guess I guess I do. This is the edge. I think I'm gonna tear that even with just the picture. get an idea here of how I want to glue these down and have to move them all again. Um, and then this is a little just a little piece of Tim Holtz ephemera and an old postage stamp. Another little piece that I cut off of the bingo card. thing needs to move over to the middle I guess. Let's maybe put something here and balance it and then it can just stay the way it is. I like seeing the you can see a little bit of each layer over here on this side. I'm gonna hunt for something that go that can go here maybe something circular and get these glued down and dry and then we'll take a look at it. Okay everything is glued down. I added some lace and a little paper flower down here at the corner and I decided that this word was too not vintage looking enough and too big. So right that, that's got to go. Instead I put a little snarky quote down here. If you met my family you would understand because that's kind of how she looks. And I just went around the major papers with Stabilo and these little ones with a brown ink pad. So that's it. As I was pressing everything onto this I had a book underneath inside the frame so that I didn't wreck the paper and I could get I could press so she is done. I'll have stills at the end. I hope you enjoyed the process. A little sneak peek at the big assemblage that is coming along. Lots of planning. Um, just trying to make sure I have enough stuff before I get started. I have some things on order that I'm waiting for those to come and then I will I think I'm going to uh, um, tackle it in like sections and just work on a section at a time and then I'll bring you along for each section and we'll just keep adding to the series until that big sucker is done. So I'm kind of procrastinating because I'm not real sure where I even want to start but we'll get her going. So if you like this, if you'd like to win it, um, make sure that you are subscribed to my channel and you have rung my bell. Like this video and leave me a comment, any old comment, whatever you'd like to tell me or say to me, be kind. I hope you're all well, staying safe, and in the meantime, go make some art. Bye!